Hello and welcome to another Stratified Tech video. So, this guy has been in the news lately. That's right, the Cobb Access Port, the quintessential tuning solution for a lot of platforms, but especially Subaru. Now, these guys have made some announcements and those announcements are that they can no longer defeat or bypass any sort of emissions equipment on the cars that we tune. So, what does that mean? Well, for the majority of cars, all it means is that you're gonna get a check engine light on your dash. It's check engine. However, for the Subarus, it means a little bit more because if you remove TGVs, EGRs, or the air pump on the EJs, you're going to not just get a check engine light, but you're going to get a limp mode. And that basically renders the car non-functional. So, can you still tune to this device? Can you still get power from your car using the Cobb Access Port? Or is it time to move on to something new? Now, I like to argue that this device is still very much a useful tool, even for the Subarus that are the most affected by this change. There are other options out there. There's other flash options such as AccuTech, HP tuners, and there's also standalones. However, a lot of these other options are also going to be moving towards stricter regulations around what you can and can't remove from the car when it comes to street driven cars. If you have a race car that's on the track only, well, you know, just go standalone, find a solution that caters to whatever application you have. But for street driven cars, you know, you're going to have to abide by some rules. Now, is that the end of the world? That's the aspect that I, wanna, I want to cover today. So we'll go through all these three systems, the Trilogy, the EGR, the TGV, and then the air pump. And let's talk about their effects on performance. First of all, the TGVs. Here's a set of TGVs from an FA20 DIT, that's from the WRX, and it's a similar concept whether it's an STI or a WRX. Effectively what they are is they're a set of flaps that close at idle, at cold start and under part throttle. And the reason for them doing this is to increase the velocity of the air entering the combustion chamber. Why do you want that? You want that because you get better mixing of air and fuel and you get cleaner, more efficient combustions at low load. Does this affect your performance? Well, a little bit. And that is because even when these are fully open, you still have this shaft in the way. How much is that worth in terms of performance? Five to 10 horsepower. The reality is that a lot of the other cars we tune, Volkswagens, Mazda Speeds, they also use flaps in their manifold to improve combustion at low loads and on cold start. And those cars can make a lot of power and do make a lot of power on stock manifolds using TGV-like solutions. We're talking about 500, 600 horsepower out of Volkswagen engines using stock manifolds. So is this gonna prevent you from making big power? It's unlikely to do so. Um, it's better to focus on things like ethanol, uh, things like bigger turbos and other flow paths in and out of the motor. Now, speaking of ethanol, of course, um, the TGV input from Cobb, uh, or Cobb was using that in order to get you the E85 information to have flex fuel. That's also gone. It's a big bummer, I know, but I also know that Cobb currently is working on a solution to bring that information across the CAN bus that will no longer hijack that input. So hopefully, sooner rather than later, and hopefully Cobb is listening to this, we'll have a solution to cover flex fuel on these cars uh, without uh, having any sort of compliance issues. Moving on to number two, EGR, exhaust gas recirculation. That is basically taking exhaust gases, cooling them off and putting them back in the manifold. Why do you wanna do that? It seems like a dirty process. Well, the reality is that you do that to cool off the combustion process, to cool off exhaust and to reduce nitrogen oxides. Now, is this going to affect your performance? No, because at wide open throttle, the EGR passages are always closed. Is this going to bring a lot of carbon into your intake manifold? From our testing, and we've been doing this over many years, uh, we haven't seen a significant increase in carbon deposits inside the manifold because of EGR. So is it worth removing it performance-wise? Not really. 
you can leave it in there for a street driven car without losing any performance finally the old air pump a lot of cars don't have air pumps anymore the ej a little bit of a relic has an air pump and it lights off the catalytic converter sooner by introducing oxygen into the exhaust stream when does it work only when the car is cold at startup is it affecting your performance at all no because once the pump is off then it's not going to be part of the circuit at all so performance wise it's another part that is not going to have an effect now i know some of these parts break some of them get old and the tendency is to just toss them out well in this environment that we live in tossing them out is becoming less and less of an option especially if you need to pass emissions in your state especially if you want to have your car tuned so yes you can still tune your car there's multiple flash solutions Cobb being one of them and still being a premier solution and as i've discussed the loss of overall performance that you're going to get from removing your TGVs, your EGRs, and your air pumps, if your car is equipped with them, is relatively minor to none. So consider that when you're modifying your Subaru and consider that when you're modifying your other vehicle. Most of all, we're here to support you guys and to help you build powerful solutions uh, for, your, for your cars, for your Subarus and for the other platforms that, that uh, we support. And uh, if you guys got any questions, reach out to us and hopefully this was a helpful and insightful tech session. Until next time, take care.